welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you everything I've coloured in September, which is quite a few pictures. I managed to get quite a lot of them. Um, you may have seen one or two of these from my completed videos that I've ever done because a couple of them would have been in there. But there'll be some that some of you might have seen on Instagram and there'll be some that maybe none of you have seen perhaps. So we're going to start with Hansel and Gretel. So I decided I really wanted to do another one in this one so I did this one of Gretel so um, I used some acrylic pearlescent paint for her for the background there and then I used um, acrylic paint is this is meant to be Payne's grey but it kind of looks like a dark blue even I don't know but to me it looks like dark blue supposed to be grey though um, for this background because I was going to leave it white but then I just felt like it. I wanted this to stand out a little bit more so I felt like the grey would work better and then I used colour pencil for this bit here, here, her for Gretel herself um, and then I've got some fine tech metallic paint on the um, whatever these things are I don't know they kind of look a bit like flowers, but they're not. But whatever these things are, I've used some metallic paint there. I've also used some Gansai Tambi along this like um, circle edge there as well. And then, of course, we have stickles because, you know, I can just never not see a reason to not have stickles in the picture. And then this outer circle I've done with um, Jane Davenport Sea Glitzy paints. Um, those ones but it's quite dark so it's quite hard to see so hopefully the lighting as well is okay because so it's the afternoon here so <laughs> I hope that you can see everything okay um so I also did a picture in Victoria Darlings this is my first picture I've done in here because I think I think I got this book in August actually but this was the first picture I've done in this one and I did this as a colour along with Kalina, the lovely KP Colours here at YouTube and we, she chose this picture and we both had a go at doing it so um, I'll just hold it back so you can see the whole thing so it's meant to be a circle, this is meant to be a poster, I didn't realise it was a poster so I kind of didn't make mine very postery. I mean, you know, like it's just this fold, this little thing here is like folded over, and I was just like, nah, I can't be bothered to <laughs> make it like it's white right behind. I was like, I can't be bothered to do that. So we've got circus theme going on. So I use some alcohol markers. As I'll show you on the back. There's some alcohol markers I use. I don't use it for everything, but I use the alcohol markers as a base for most things. And then I believe I used Prisma colours on top and I felt like the paper was different to the other Hannah Lynn picture uh, books I have I felt like the Prismacolors without having any because I used Prismacolors on bits of the paper that didn't have any um, marker down to the base and I felt like they worked so much better than other Create Space paper so for some reason um, and it might just be that it's my copy of this book other people's copies might be different but Prismacolor works better on this paper for me so um, of course I had to put stickles on her outfit because you know she's supposed to be glittery so um, you can see all the beautiful glitter and then the elephant's got some stickles and then I've used some gel pen on the circus sign it took me a little while to figure out what colour I wanted to do the sign because I did decide to do red and kind of like a yellowy colour for the tent I decided to do that um unfortunately you can't really see my make out my fireworks I, I've got some stickles and then some gel pen for the fireworks but they don't come out that great I really like my tiger I felt like my tiger came out quite well um and then I just did like a plain background for their circles and I used a metallic pen to go around the outside of that but um yeah for like it did take me a while and I didn't know what colours I wanted to do her so this one, colour-wise, took me a little while to figure out what I was going to do. Um, but I like how I've done my candy floss, or cotton candy, or fairy floss, because in Australia it's known as fairy floss, and I think that's amazing! <laughs> but obviously cotton candy in America, or over here we call it candy floss. Um, and then my popcorn, and... I don't know whether that's meant to be root beer, or... or it looks kind of root beery, or it could just be normal beer, I don't know. And then the peanuts and stuff, so... Um, and I just used gel pen for the little sweets because I, I thought they were so small I just couldn't be bothered to like really colour them in 
any more than that so that's that one so I got a bunch of these Disney coloring books so um, Mez Colorages de Rive and this one's a Bal Royale so they all have this like title at the top and then they have different things here so I think this means maybe royal ball I'm not really sure I know this is definitely royal but whether that means ball in French I have no idea <laughs> I did try to translate this and it did not translate it to anything it just said the same thing so if you're French and you know what it says please let me know but I'm assuming ball just because I think all the pictures are mostly of princesses in here at royal balls or going to balls, or princesses that went to a ball in their st in the movie, but or you know would go to the ball in their movie, because Snow White's in here and she doesn't go to a ball. But anyway, that's just why I kind of figured it's um not got all the Disney princesses or Disney girls in it, just some of them. Um, so I did one in this one because I thought I really wanted to colour something in it, and I thought why not. Um, and then, and then, where is she? Yeah, as you can see, I don't really bother putting um, tabs in. I, I'm just too lazy. <laughs> so I did this one, and it's Rapunzel. And she's got some lovely fine tech paint around the edge. So the background was already done in this one, and I have to say, I really love the background that's in this one. It's beautiful. Um, see, look, they're dancing. This is why this makes me think that it's like at a ball. <laughs> Um, so I did Rapunzel, I used Prismacolors, and I did use some, I think for her skin, I think, I used Luminance for her skin, and I found the paper is quite smooth, but I felt like it made, helped to blend the colours um, easier together, so you can't layer up loads in this book, but you could certainly blend the colours a lot better, so I really like how it came out, and I love how her hair came out, it took me forever to do, because I tried to do individual strands like Sammy has t been teaching us to do so I tried that but um yeah I know I really love this one and it didn't take like an absolute age to do either so that's the good thing about these um princess books is that they don't take forever and the paper is also quite thick as well um for like some kids book I mean this was like three pounds two pounds I mean it was three euros no this was three pounds because I got this one on Amazon UK so it was three pounds but I think they're about there are a few euros. You can get them on Amazon France. There was one I really wanted and I couldn't get, but anyway. So there's my lovely Rapunzel. She's like one of my favourite Disney princesses. Um, I think Rapunzel and Elsa are my faves. But there's not a lot with Elsa in, sadly. It's mostly, mostly Rapunzel, which I'm glad because I love her. Now, I did my first ever picture in jewellery box because I had this book for since maybe the mid of August and I had not done anything yet so I felt like I had to finally do something so I decided to do the um uh the nameplate page because I've pretty much done all the nameplate pages and all of the Hannah Carlson books apart from Daydreams so I felt like I should start with the nameplate page in this book because I kind of feel like it's a tradition now for me I do need to go back and do Daydreams though but I did this one anyway so I used Neo Color 2 for the background and now unfortunately for me I kind of I knew I wanted to do my peacocks, like how peacocks should look like normally. So like the sort of dark blues, like the Prussian blues and then the sort of aqua greens and then like the brighter greens here, like a parrot type green down here. I knew I wanted to do that, but I also kind of wanted them to stand out. So I was I had such a hard time trying to think about what to do the background. I'm sorry if I'm wobbling the camera, it's because it's on my bed and I'm moving around. Um, so yeah, I wasn't really sure like what to do. And then I was trying to think about what colours would go, and I was thinking, oh, you know, what colours can I do for the background? And I just felt like, oh, I'll just do blue. And then obviously I felt like, although the background's fine, like I don't hate it, but I just feel like it had, doesn't, it didn't have the effect I wanted of making these really pop out as much as I wanted to. And then I felt like actually what I maybe should have done was get my Albert Durer's and just like, I know, a colour and just sort of gone around the peacocks and stuff to give them a bit of a glow I think I feel like that would have worked better but oh well so I have got some stickles on the flowers and I've got some fine tech paint on the stars and then on the peacocks as well um, and there's a little bit of stickles on the circle bit above the jewel there so I did look up a picture of a peacock for reference but I did change a few things like the tops is glitter gel pen up here because I just felt like I couldn't really be bothered to kind of do it how it should be um, 
so I used Luminance and Pablo's pencils only on this one. So that is all I did for that one. I did start another one here, which I'll probably finish um, this month, so October coming. Oh, and one thing, that I think that the paper in this book is a bit different because I did have a little bit of bleed through um, on this. Um, paper and when I've used quite a lot of water on some of the other Hannah Carlson books I've never had that before but I mean it's okay because it's not that bad and I can just colour over it but and the paper is a lot more crinkly as well than usual so I don't know whether the paper in this book is slightly different it doesn't feel like it's different but maybe it is because like I've never had that problem so I'm gonna have to be a bit careful with water I think um I did start this one I haven't finished it yet but I got some new pencils I got some what they called Koinor poly colour hard muff pencils. I got the portrait set, so they're got skin to um, like skin tones and skin colours in. So I thought I'd give them a try. So that was like a pale skin attempt. This was like it's meant to be dark skinned, but it looks tan because the dark browns are not really dark enough, and there's no black. So um, that was as dark a skin I could get out of the dark brown. So this one's gonna be a tanner, a different type of tan. So I won't have like these sort of browns in the tan skin, but fortunately, <laughs> um, I mean the skin came out good, but it's just I wanted to be able to do like a dark skin, dark, dark skin, and I think I won't be able to do it with that set. So or you know I'll have to supplement it with some of my other pencils. So then I did another body color with KP, and it was with Sammy as well, but Sammy's bless her, her copy of her book, the, the paper just went funny and. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to do a picture, so hopefully she can come back and do it at another time. So we chose this picture. I think I chose this one. And um, it's Belle and the Beast. I think Belle's maybe running away. I'm not really sure, but I used my gouache paint for her dress, and I love how the dress came out. And I used the gouache paint for her hair, and I did use it for the skin as well. So, I mean, to be honest, I don't think the skin's that bad considering I use gouache paint because I'm not like very adept, adept at using gouache yet like for some things like the dress and stuff I feel like I'm actually getting much better at but her hair I found was a bit tricky and the skin was a bit tricky to do but like it doesn't look that bad and I think more over time when I practice more and more it'll be better so I use gouache for the background I use pencils for the trees and this archway I use gouache paint for the roses and then I've used pencil for the beasts. Although now I wish I had used gouache. I think I was going to. And then I forgot. And then I used pencil. And then I was like, this would have come out better if I'd used gouache paint. Um, and for him, I just used um, Prismacolor pencil. So I used a... And then I decided a black background would look quite nice. So it's just black acrylic paint. And there's no... Oh, there is some stickles. There's um, a few stickles like on her dress there. But that's it. Because I just felt like it didn't really need a lot. And she's got stickles in another dress anyway. So next I have Magical, The Magical Journey. And I'd only done one picture in this previously, which is the one with the Holly, no, the Route 66. <coughs> Sorry, I just need to cough. So I did this one with the Unicorn because I was having a look. Um, I basically decided I'm... Um, because I've seen a lot of colouring in it with Elena. I just thought, like, I really feel like doing one of these. I haven't done one for ages. And, you know, I think if I use the ink tents and stuff, it won't take forever. So I thought, I'm going to come back and have a go at doing one of these. So I decided on this one. Because I wanted one that wasn't too busy. Like, this one's very busy. And this is one of the ones that was less busy. Because I think that's a problem. This book kind of puts me off a little bit. Because I'm a bit like, oh, there's so many details. Where do I start? What is what? So I thought, I'll do this. Because I can clearly see what is what in this one. So it's a unicorn from Peru to Japan. And I love it. So it's all ink tents. I didn't use anything else but ink tents. And I have finally now got all the ink tents colours. Including, wait, no, excluding two black so I think it's like Chinese ink and sepia ink although I did try to get sepia ink but I accidentally picked up another black ink instead so I got two of those and I was just like you know what I'm sure they're all similar so I can't be bothered <laughs> to go and get them <coughs> I might do one day but for now I was like I don't need like four different blacks and they're probably not that similar because I feel like all the reds in the ink tents are pretty much the same um so I have put some stickles on the stars and then the little like 
dot and then of course the unicorn horn had to have stickles on it too so um yeah i just thought a purple unicorn would look quite cool so i had quite fun trying to mix like the colors around a little bit with this one and trying to use water like not like loads of water but quite a bit of water just to try and get the pencil strokes to go and I feel like I've achieved that mostly because I think that's the thing I found hard before was trying to get rid of all the pencil strokes like I wasn't using enough water and there is a bit of glitter gel pen for the little dotted line so I really enjoyed that one I love doing her books so hopefully I'll, I'll do a few more of those this coming month so I did also one in the magical city so I literally did the magical journey and I was like I feel like I want to do another one so I went to the Magical City. Again, I didn't want one that was really busy because I didn't want one that would take... I didn't want one to take a while. <coughs> I'm really sorry. I've got a cough for some reason. So I did the International Space Station. I'll just pop it down here so you can see the whole thing. Um, so I really didn't know how I was going to do the Earth because I, when I looked at this, I thought, well, this is clearly cloud. Because the Earth, if you see the pictures of the Earth and space, you always see like the clouds covering it. And then obviously because there wasn't any defined shapes for like, um, there wasn't any defined shapes for like land. I was trying to debate whether to create some myself or just do this all blue water. I mean, I could have obviously done it all land as well. And I had a little look, I thought, well, I'll have a look and see what other people have done. Interestingly, a lot of people have done this blue and done these green. Um, I mean, it's fine because you can do whatever you want in your colouring book. But I, I was like, do they know these are clouds or do they think they're landmass or do they just not care and just do it anyway? But either way, it doesn't matter because, like I said, you can do whatever you like. You know, this didn't even have to be blue. This could have been like purple for, any, for anybody who wanted to do it purple. They could have done the purple. So. Um, I decided I didn't want to do the background black because I wanted it to kind of look very galaxy so <coughs> I was really trying really hard to think about what colours I wanted to do because these swirly things I was trying to think well I could do the whole thing black and have these kind of galaxy but then I thought well no I don't want the whole thing black so I thought if I did it black and blue and then these purple and pink I felt like that worked better and then I just went in with a gel pen and um put loads of stars in and these, I kind of feel like they look like bubbles. They're not. I <laughs> really, I, they look like bubbles to me now because of how I coloured them. But yeah. Um, and I decided because I looked at pictures of the space station, and there were pictures with all of these panels being bright, like orangey yellow, because that's when they're solar panels. So that's with all the like the sunshine on them. But then a part of me also really wanted to do them like this nice aqua green. I know they're not that colour, but that's just what I wanted to do. And then I thought, well, it would look kind of cool maybe if the sun's like just about coming round to like hit them for them to start working. So if you see like, basically I've done it like the sun's coming and then I've got yellow bits on here to show that the sun is shining on the space, space station. So I try to use a bit of lighting in this. So that's why there. And I kind of feel like it worked quite well. So I'm quite happy with that. And then I've got stickles on the stars the big stars i've put some stickers on them <laughs> so i had a lot of fun doing this and it did not take forever which was nice so um you can do some of these like i feel like this one as well wouldn't take forever and that's like the northern lights i think that's yes it is because that's a cool thing she says what they are so and um, that's the only one i did in that one then this one i literally finished yesterday so i also got some of these um disney books maxi colo ones from Amazon France and you can get these I'm really annoyed so I went on Amazon France got this one and a few others to then find you can get them on an Amazon UK but I paid the same price so I had to, but some of them some of these ones I wanted they didn't have on Amazon UK so I would have had to get them on Amazon France and pay post and packaging anyway so um luckily for the time being as we're still in the EU we don't pay tax on products we just pay for post and packaging so I didn't have to pay any tax import tax on these so that's why it worked out basically the same price as I would have paid in the UK for them anyway so that was okay um but yeah unfortunately <laughs> come March might be a different story I might not be able to read on there so much anymore um so I decided to do Pocahontas because I love Pocahontas um 
but I was looking for the book because quite I'll just show you a little bit because I haven't really shown this so there's lots of princesses in it obviously because there's princesses but the backgrounds are all like plain there's like nothing in the background and so I was trying to think I wanted a quick one and I was trying to think I did want to put a background in so I was looking through and I came across Pocahontas and I thought you know what I really want to do this one and I thought oh I can imagine um have her having like these like you know she's under grandma grandmother willow tree I know these aren't willow branches but um I thought I could put these like wisteria things with paint down and then I did put watercolour paint behind unfortunately I kind of feel like it's taken the effect of this away a little bit but I had to colour it some way so and it needs to be green and then I used Albert Dura just for a base for the grass and then it went over the pencil to do individual strokes to make her look like she's sitting on the grass um and I used Derwent drawing pencils for her skin and I love them the the skin came out really well I mean it's annoying because I feel that maybe I should have gone over with like buff titanium or something just to try and like there's loads of like white space like white patches if you see what I mean like it's not as smooth as I'd like it like it looks really good but I feel like if the pa if, I think it might just be the paper as well that perhaps would come up better but um yeah the Derman drawing pencils for tan skin I have found some awesome colours for tan skin finally so I'll be using those again they were great and then I used the pe drawing pencils for her hair I tried use this very light Soloway blue um, it doesn't look blue though. <laughs> it's to kind of put a bit of highlight in her hair. Um, I think I did. I did use Prisma Color for. I can't remember his name. I remember Miko the raccoon, but I can't remember his name. But I used um Prisma colors for them because obviously the drawing pencils do not have those colors in there. Um, but yeah, they, I I know you so use Prisma. No, I use Pablo's. Because I used a Pablo green for this because that was just the closest pencil set to me at the time. And then I used a Pablo blues for the um, necklace. But um, yeah, no, I love how this one came out. So this is a great little book. And there's a tiny, tiny bit of bleed through there. I used quite a bit of water though. Obviously it's made the paper really crinkled, but I don't really mind. Um, by the time I've probably done Mulan, it will look fine anyway, so... Um, but yeah, no, this is not bad. I mean, this is kind of like copy paper type paper. A little bit better than copy paper, but it's basically copy paper. But yeah, it's not a bad little book, so highly recommend. <coughs> I'm just going to have a bit of water, hoping that that will help my cough. Oh, I have got a cold at the moment, but I don't actually have a cough. I've had like... Um, a, you know, a blocked nose and a bit of a funny throat. And then I talked loads today with my mum. Loads. And for some reason didn't cough with her, but I am with you guys. So the last few pictures, I'm just going to move these to this over here. I'm really worried that I'm going to, like, they're all going to slide off the bed. So obviously Enchanted Forest because, you know book I'm trying to finish so I've got three to show you in here there will be one I probably will finish it later this evening so technically I will have finished it October not October September but um I'm gonna put stickles on it and I thought well if I film this later I won't be able to show you any in this book because it will be drying with the stickles on it so um I'll just have to show you kind of what I've done or started with it so um, I'm just gonna find the pictures oh wait no there's one right at the front Oh wait, I've done more than four then. I forgot because this one I didn't post on Instagram because I didn't, I was just nothing fancy. So I thought I don't really need to put it on there. So, because I don't want to like overboard people with the same pictures. Well, well, loads of pictures from the book. But, um, so I just decided um, I would just tackle this one because I thought maybe it wouldn't take me a long time. I've used fine tech paint for some of the leaves and accents and stuff. And I thought that looked nice. I think I used... Polychromos for the leaves. Um, and did I use some on the owl? I think I used some on the owl. Um, and then I forgot I had the tritone, the Koinor tritones. Forgot I had those. I thought, you know what, because I don't really care about this title page, like, it doesn't need to look amazing in my eyes. I just wanted something I could just do. You know when you want to, like, minus the colour? I kind of felt like I just want to do that. I didn't want to put, like, too much effort in. I have with the leaves, but I just kind of used, 
instead of doing all the different types of leaves like these ones all different colors I thought I'll just do them all the same and then just do these ones down here are slightly different colors so I only had two different color combos for those and then I used um, the tritone greens to do the leaves here and then these ones there um, and then the grass as well. Oh no, the grass, I think I just used one colour pencil. Um, and then the, the tree trunks, I just used a Koinor. I think I based this with like, first of all, with just a brown polychromous, like a raw umber or something. I think I just based it. And then I just took the Koinor tritone and just went over and just rotated it every now and then. So you got like different colour patches. Because I just thought, you know what, I just don't want to spend forever trying to shade the tree in. I thought I'm just going to use the Koinors because... They do kind of the job for you a little bit. I mean, you know, it doesn't look uber amazing. Actually, if you ever use these, you could probably, to do a bit of shadow, um, just use like a normal like dark black or dark brown just to add a bit of shadow in. You could just do that. So there's that one. Um, I'm just going to go get the other ones a minute. I'm going to flip through it a bit. Ooh. So I did this massive double page spread because I felt like I needed, it was coming towards the end of the summer holidays for me, so obviously I'm gonna, I had, I have had some work, and I thought I'm not gonna have as much time to dedicate doing some of the really detailed double page spreads in the book, and I've got two more left, really detailed double page spreads left to do in the book, so I'm thinking I'm gonna have to start those soon, or do one in the holidays, but um, I thought like I would tackle this one, I thought I would use my gouache paint to do this bit here and then I use ink tents to do all these stones um, and these little things here, whatever they are, I don't know. I thought, okay, I'll just do water stuff. So this did not take too long to do. Now the leaves up here and things, um, I was trying to think about what colours I could use because I wanted to use interesting colours and then I saw colouring with Elena. She did... A video showing you how she coloured this fairy godmother in and I love the colour combo she used for the fairy godmother's hair I thought wow that's amazing and I thought wait I could make that the colour combo for like some of the leaves and stuff so this leaf bit up here would be the colour combo there um, and then I thought well obviously if I'm going to do these nice blues I need something to go with and greens and purples kind of go quite well so I just took how she chose the colour combo for these and kind of did the same with like the other ones and then that's how I did that so I used Neo Colour 2 for the background because I didn't want to use pencil and I wanted it to be it, I wanted it to be quite light so that all this would be kind of more the focus points and sorry if I'm putting a bit of shadow and then of course I put stickles on it um, and again most of you probably seen this one already because it's in my completed videos but I really did love uh, I didn't <laughs> I didn't really massively enjoy colouring this one so much. I mean, I love the outcome and I did love like colouring certain things like the mushrooms. I loved colouring the mushrooms in. I loved colouring those leaf things in. I liked doing the rocks, believe it or not. But there, it was just this, to me, I was just like, this is a very detailed page. I need to get it done. But I did want it to look pretty and I feel like I achieved that. So even though I was a bit like, I kind of don't want to do this but I have to and then I do want to do it anyway I kind of feel like in the end it came out how I wanted to so I am happy with that so I will show you the one that I'm working on now I'm working on this pond one so I decided ages ago I saw Peter Hewitt's tutorial on this or you know I saw that she had a tutorial on this and I saw a complete picture and thought oh you know that's really nice and then I thought you know what I'm going to be really, really lazy. I'm going to follow her tutorial for this one. And then I don't have to think too much about how I'm going to colour things. I mean, to be fair, like, it's really funny. I'm following her tutorial and I'm thinking, you know what? I could actually just pick out the colours. I mean, I have kind of picked out some colours because I didn't have... She using, she's using Polychromis and Derwent Artist Pencils. I don't have Derwent Artist, pen, artist Pencils, so I'm kind of having to substitute some colours. But um, yeah, so I'm signing this one. I'm going to put stickles on it though. This is why like, I couldn't film this completed one in this video um, because it would need to be drying. Anyway, moving on. Um, I did this Day of the Dead inspired one, which again, some of you would have seen. It was a skull with loads of leaves. I did not want to colour all the leaves. I looked at it and thought this is going to take forever. I, don't, I just didn't know how I could make it look kind of interesting 
I think because of the thing with some of these leaf ones, I look at them and I think, well, what can I do that's different? That it's not all just all green. <laughs> and I thought, well, actually, I could paint over this with acrylic paint and make it look like um, the Dia, Dia des Muertes. Day of the Dead. I think I said that right. I think that's the day it's known as, as in Mexico. So apologies for my terrible Spanish because I did not take Spanish at school. <laughs> um, yeah, I also watched Coco as well and I thought, oh, I think I did this before I watched Coco, but after I watched Coco, I thought, oh, I really like this thing. It's really cool. I mean, I knew what Day of the Dead was before that and, and all that, but I mean, I liked this picture that I did more. Um, so I did back acrylic background as well, and I did quite a good job. You can't really see the leaves on that, and then I just, with a pencil over the top, did my own designs. I had a little look at, like, also the designs that they had and kind of made up my own, because I think all of them have, none of them are the same. They all have different things, so I just sort of did my own thing. And I finally did this unicorn picture. Now, I had just finished doing the unicorn in the magical journey and I love the colours and I felt like, yes, those are the colours I'm going to do these unicorns because I've been wanting to do this page, page for a long time. But I can never think about how I wanted the unicorns to look because I really wanted them to look like really cool in my eyes. So I finally found colour combos I like. So actually, I used erogatin pencils on these. The entire thing is erogatin pencils because I hadn't used them for ages and I thought like, I'm going to just use a rotatin. So they had some, because rotatins, to be fair, for the unicorns had some really good shades that worked for this. So that's why I chose them. And then I just decided I'd do the whole thing. So I tried to do like a kind of goldy colour um, for the filigree thing. So that was the kind of gold that I could get out of the colours I had. And then I thought, well, I was trying to think about what colours to go around. So I just did green because I was like, I don't know what colours. So. This is what I got that goes together well, and then obviously there's stickles on the unicorn horns because <laughs> who wouldn't have stickles on there? So I believe that's everything I've done in this book. Um, I'm just checking. Yeah. So that's everything I've coloured for the whole of September. So I hope that you enjoyed that. And obviously you'll get to see the other picture. Technically there is one more that will be done, but you'll, it'll just have to be put in October. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing everybody else's completed pictures that who are whoever else is doing a completed pictures video for September. I've seen a few already, so I'm looking forward to more of those because I love them. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.